Today, I'm going to be talking about my experience promoting the Beaches 2023 album, Blame My Ex, and I'll peel into some of the creative decisions that we made to make this a summer hit. What's up everyone, my name is Kyle and I'm the founder of Kyle the Ally, a new type of digital marketing agency that specializes in using social media to promote your music on digital streaming platforms. The Beaches are a rising rock band out of Toronto, Canada, and they've been around for a number of years, but their 2023 album called Blame My Ex was kind of like a watershed moment for their career. It really elevated them both musically and professionally as a band. I happen to be a huge fan and I even got to see them live in my home city of Detroit earlier this year, which was a ton of fun. So the album itself came out in September 2023, but they also released four singles ahead of the album in the months leading up to that release. And we ran a campaign for all four of the singles plus the album, and we also ran some campaigns for the tours that they were going on at the time. We followed the model that I've described earlier on this channel, where you use a campaign to promote each of the singles and test out some of your media, your assets, your audiences, and then throwing in all of the best stuff to promote the album when that's ready. If you haven't seen the video where I discussed that strategy, I'll link it up here. This project was a validation of the kind of old school method of releasing music where you put out a bunch of singles and then the album. I know a lot of people talk about, yeah, this kind of model is dead, but I think this is an excellent case study to the contrary. I ran all of my campaigns as conversion campaigns, and for that I used Hyped It landing pages in the associated conversion event. I have a preference for using Hyped It, and I also explained this in an earlier video. The first single that they released was called Everything Is Boring, and that came out on April 7th. 2023. We hit this song hard on the day of release with an ad campaign that started the very day the song came out and we ran the campaign for roughly one month after that. You could see spread of audiences that we tried for this song and among all of the audiences we tried this particular song performed best among fans of Lord and Taylor Swift getting the best cost per result and the best number of results and it was also pretty hot with fans of indie rock just in general as a genre. We tried some other non-music lifestyle interests, like you can see there's an ad set targeting fans of surfing, snowboarding, and skateboarding, um, was something else that we tried with some success. Generally, we started out with a baseline list of countries that was pretty wide geographically, and later we refined the targeting to include some high payout countries, and that was a direction from the band's management. The campaign average of 20 cents per conversion Canadian is roughly equivalent to 15 cents per conversion US in bald eagle currency. We also tried a big selection of videos, and by far, the most successful video that we tried was this viral TikTok clip, literally just a video that they had posted on TikTok ahead of the song release and went viral on its own with no paid advertising put behind it whatsoever. And it turns out that if a video does really well organically, it also does really well as an ad. Who would have thought? And it just goes to show that there's no magic behind what we do with the marketing. If people like your media, they'll like it, whether it's organic, whether it's a paid ad. I think this really affirms that point. The second best video that we did, this was kind of a distant second place, was this Sky 2 clip. The rest of the clips were secondary. This is common for a campaign like this for one or two of the clips to really dominate the campaign's performance. The second single they released came out on May 5th and this one was called Blame Bread. This was the big kahuna. This is the song that really turned into a big hit for them. We ran the ad starting on the day of release for this song for roughly a month and a half. Uh, the best performing audiences from last time, I recycled and pulled into this campaign and then mixed in 
a couple of new ideas to kind of keep things fresh and explore some more opportunities to get maybe an even better audience. And in this case, the song performed the best among fans of The Strokes, Tears for Fears, Arctic Monkeys, as well as just fans of indie rock and fans of the 1975 and Harry Styles. We used a similar strategy of starting with a wide set of geographies and then later adding this like high payout group of geographies as well. And the campaign average was 19 cents Canadian per conversion, which is about 14 cents US. There was one video that really carried the performance and that was from their music video just a clip that i pulled simply from the intro so this music vid one by far got the most results for them and got a really killer cost per conversion This is also confirmation that the more traditional type of music video media also does really well as long as the music video looks awesome and showcases the music well. This song was so hot for them when it came out that when this campaign finished we actually went back and ran a second campaign for another month and a half. That one I believe averaged about 27 cents Canadian or 20 cents US per conversion. And then after that we ran a third campaign. This third time around we ran a more refined list of countries that came from the band's management but with that came kind of more expensive conversions this one averaged 63 cents Canadian or about 47 cents US but in the context of the countries that we were running this campaign in that was a really killer cost per result and we ran that third campaign for about two months for this song we ran for about five months of continuous advertising the third single to come off of this project was called me and me and that came out on July 21st for this campaign and for all the campaigns moving forward, we had adopted the strategy we used for that third Blame Brett campaign, which was using a more selective list of geographies and inside of each of these geographies then using the same basket of audience interests, so the same kind of music interests, genres, whatever, that we had explored from the very first campaign that we had done for Everything is Boring and the first Blame Brett. It's kind of an inversion of how I usually do things. Typically, all the ad sets will have the same list of geographies and then I split them up by music interests. In this case, we did the inverse of that. So it was the same list of music interests that we split up by geography. In this particular scenario, we weren't necessarily looking for the absolute best cost per result because we cared about giving each of the countries a certain amount of attention. This campaign averaged 62 cents Canadian per conversion, which is about 47 cents US at the time. We particularly got really, really strong performance in the US. The US was our best cost per result country and the one that we got the most results from. And so that kind of stood in the face of the general wisdom that the US is the most expensive country to advertise in. Yes, that is generally true, but if you've got a really awesome song, a really good video, you can really succeed anywhere. Of the videos that we tried, we had a couple of clips that I had edited from their lyric video, but it turns out this TikTok style of video is what did really well for them. This TikTok one video actually got by far the most results for us and relative to the results the cheapest cost per conversion This lyric video, I think that only got like a handful of conversions. Even though the cost per result looks cheaper, it didn't perform as well as the more kind of organic looking TikTok videos that they had. The fourth and final single to come out with this project was called What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Paranoid. This was the smallest of all of the campaigns we ran. We only did this one for about one month because it was so close to the album release that happened just three weeks later. We had a similar story with this one where we broke it down by geography. Campaign average was 47 cents per conversion Canadian, which at the time was roughly 35 cents per US directly converted. In particular, we saw the US was the best performing market for this song as well, averaging 36 cents per conversion Canadian, or about 27 cents US. Not to pat us on the back too hard, but guys, when you're promoting to a US only audience, it does not get much better than this. The best performing video actually came from the music video again, and it was the music video three that got us by far the most results and a good cost per conversion.
So up until this point, I had kind of seen for each of the campaigns, we were alternating between having one of the more raw style, organic looking TikTok videos, and then one of the more polished music videos. Those kind of alternated in terms with what was most popular. Finally, we had the album release on September 15th. And as a fun side note, I happened to be in Toronto at the same time that this album came out. The campaign that I ran for the album was really the capstone of the whole strategy that we've been building in the months leading up to this point. I was able to take what I learned from promoting the individual singles and take all of the best assets and put those together in a campaign to promote the album, which is where you put the most resources into promoting. Other than that, most of the strategy behind promoting an album is very similar to what you would do with the singles. Campaign performance average across this one uh, was 53 cents per conversion Canadian, or about 40 cents US at the time. And again, we saw that the United States was the best performing market, which you probably could have guessed if you were paying attention to what the individual singles were doing. But US specific performance was the best at 40 cents Canadian, which is about 30 cents US. We ran this campaign from roughly the time the album came out until the end of the year. So it was really like a full send, three and a half months worth of promotion for every song that was on this album. I basically cherry picked the best performing one or two clips from each of the campaigns. So we had the six best videos then running together. It was kind of interesting to see like of all of these videos, which ones performed the best. And actually it turned out this music video three clip from What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Paranoid got the most results for this campaign and did it with the cheapest cost per result. The second best clip that we had came from Everything Is Boring and it was this viral TikTok. And this is interesting because the song Blame Brett did the best organically in terms of just sheer song performance and you know things like streams and listeners, but it was actually the media that came off of two of the smaller singles that did the best as digital ads to promote the project as a whole. And if you don't know too much already about what I do, I founded Kyle the Ally with the mission of helping independent artists and indie record labels use digital marketing to get their media heard and out there in the world. I work as part of a small team of talented individuals and we specialize in using the meta advertising platform to promote digital streaming on Spotify and Apple Music as well as Google Ads to promote music videos on YouTube and more recently we also helped artists promote their tours so if you're interested go to kyletheally.com fill out a quick intro questionnaire and if it sounds like working together is a good fit we'll get back to you with some next steps. I'm going to quickly throw up a summary page of all of the performance metrics we've talked about if you're interested in comparing how the campaigns performed. I also want to talk you through some lessons learned from promoting a big project like this. This project was successful first and foremost because the Beaches make really awesome music and they're super talented. I think that goes without saying, but if I was to credit a second thing to the success of the marketing that we did, it is that they had a really deep library of video content to use to create ad creatives. And with that, they had a combination of the more traditional, more professional music video, but they also had more of the TikTok style video, usually shot in vertical. This project in particular showed me just how powerful that TikTok style of video has become in the last year and a half of doing the digital marketing. The glowing message is that you don't always need a super high dollar professional music video. As long as you understand your audience and you create the type of video that will be appealing to that kind of audience, you can have a super successful campaign in spite of not having a huge video budget. Related to that point, you can still have awesome performance, even in traditionally expensive countries to advertise in, if you've got a great ad and you really understand your audience. We saw time and time again throughout this project that the US was the best performing market for their music, even though traditionally the US is the most expensive country to advertise. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel where I'll be sharing more of what I've learned as a professional music marketer. You're not going to want to miss the episodes that I've got coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.